Welcome back children to chapter 6 part 3 population. So today we will study life expectancy, literacy rates and questions asked on page number 44. Let's understand what life expectancy means. Life expectancy simply means the average number of years a person born in a country is expected to live if current mortality rates, which means the death rates, continue to apply. Now, increase in life expectancy not only means more people living longer, but it also suggests that fewer children are dying. Now, what are the reasons for an increase in life expectancy? Decrease in infant mortality rate and deaths of young adults from disease, war, accident, etc. means that people live long enough to get old. Expectancy of both India and Brazil with the help of line graph. Now on the x-axis we have years and on the y-axis we have life expectancy. So this is the line graph of life expectancy in Brazil. In 1960, if you see, the average year a person lived up to was 54 years. Okay, so the graph is increasing. That means life expectancy is increasing. By 2016, the average life expectancy, okay, increased up to 75 years in Brazil. Now, what does this increase? What does this indicate? Now, this graph is moving in the upward direction means that life expectancy is increasing which indicates that the country is developing okay now let's study the life expectancy of india now this is the life expectancy graph of india now if you see here in 1960 the life expectancy or the average age a person lived was 41 years. In 2016, it went up to 68 years. Life expectancy went up to 68 years. Now, even here we see that the graph is moving in the upward direction, which means life expectancy is increasing. Again, it indicates that the country is developing. Now, let us understand what does an increase in life expectancy indicate? Okay. Now, if you see both the countries, these are the line graphs of both the countries and both the countries, the line graph is increasing. That is life expectancy is increasing in both the countries. Now, increase in life expectancy is an indicator of development of that society. Okay, because of newer technology and better medical facilities improvement in health facilities, progress in medical field, access to nutrition, nutritious foods leads to an increase in the average life expectancy. In most of the developing countries, life expectancy is still less. For example, if you take some of the African countries, their life expectancy is less because of lack of healthcare facilities and treatment. Now, why is it so? Because of low income. But with socio-economic development, it is increasing. Life expectancy is increasing. Answer the question given on page number 43. Is there a relationship between increase in life expectancy and growth of population? If yes, then how? So, in my previous slides, I've already explained what is life expectancy. So, the answer to this question is yes, there is a relationship between increase in life expectancy and growth of population. Now, how is it? Now, uh, if you see in my previous videos, I've already explained how what is growth rate. So, growth rate is equal to birth rate minus death rate. So, if life expectancy increases, death rate decreases. So, it would mean population also increases. Study a very important quality of population, which is literacy rate. Now, 
what do we mean by literacy or whom do we call as literate a person who can read and write is called a literate person now according to the census of 2001 a person aged 7 years and above who can read and write with understanding in any language is treated as literate okay now a region does not develop because it has a large population it is decided on the quality of population it has so literacy is a very important quality of a population only an informed and educated citizen can make intelligent choices and undertake research and development projects so literacy is very important literacy leads to the development of a civilized and progressive society it helps in eradicating undesirable customs and traditions and blind beliefs low levels of literacy are a serious obstacle for a, for economic improvement if the literacy level is high and educational attainment is of a higher standard the country is considered to be socially and economically developed let's study literacy rates of both brazil and india with the help of line graph okay so on the x axis we have the number number of years and on the y axis we have literacy rate in percentage in 1981 the literacy rate of brazil was 74.6 then it went up to 80% in 1991 went up to 86.4% in 2001 it went up to 91.4% in 2011 and in 2016 we see it has gone up to 92.6 so what do we see here that the literacy rate in brazil is increasing okay it's increasing it was 90 it was 74.6 in 1961 it rose or it went up to 92.6% in 2016 so let's see what is the literacy rate in india okay now If you see here in 1981 the literacy rate of India was 40.8 then it went up to 48.2 in 1991 in 2001 it was 61 in 2011 it was 69.3 and in 2016 it was 72.2% now if we compare it with Brazil the literacy rate of Brazil is more than that of india it is 92.2% okay go on to the question that that they have asked on page number 44 okay which says study the indices of density maps of both the countries now they have given us density maps of both the countries on page number 38 and 39 and they have asked us to study the indices okay after studying the indices they want us to tell the difference between both the indices and what conclusions we can draw further now if you see here so if we look at the key of both the maps what do we see we can say that india shows four categories of density of the population while brazil shows five categories of density of population so this is the first difference in the indices the second difference is in india the least populated areas have less than 100 persons per square kilometer while the least populated areas in brazil have only 50 persons per square kilometer the third difference
the highest density of population in india is categorized at more than 500 persons per square kilometer okay while that in brazil here it is categorized as more than 300 persons per square kilometer thus the most populated areas of brazil have less population density than most populated areas of india okay so let's move on to the next question that they have asked us okay from figure 6.3 to 6.7 various aspects of population composition are given yes we've already studied uh, various aspects of uh, population composition such as sex ratio age and sex pyramid then we have seen population growth rate then we have studied life expectancy and then finally we studied literacy rate so based on various graphs that we have studied they have asked us we have to discuss and answer the following questions the first question which country has a higher sex ratio we already know what is sex ratio so the country that has higher sex ratio is none other than brazil the second question which country has higher literacy rate we've just seen that brazil has a higher literacy rate of 92.6 percent which country is growing at a faster rate the country which is growing at a faster rate is brazil which country's population has higher life expectancy the country which has higher life expectancy again we have seen it is brazil it has a life expectancy of 75 years which country has a higher proportion of the old age people now the country which has ha which has a higher proportion of the old age people is again brazil because life expectancy in brazil is more answer the questions based on our previous slides okay now considering the above discussion that we just had okay what should be done so that a manpower is utilized properly sex ratio improves and population growth rate growth is controlled write two to three sentences on each now we've already seen in a previous slide that brazil has a higher sex ratio then um, higher life expectancy higher literacy rate and the proportion of old age people is also increasing that means life expectancy is also increasing compared to india so what how can we utilize the manpower or the population of india okay so that sex ratio improves population growth is controlled so let's answer now what does manpower mean manpower refers to the human resource of a country the higher the population the greater the manpower the increased population can be a great asset if it is used properly and productively now steps to utilize manpower how can we use manpower Providing education and improving the standard of education enables the people of a country to gain appropriate skills and knowledge. Based on the skills, the manpower can be classified as skilled and unskilled sector and can be placed in various industries. Providing basic health facilities to all sections of laborers aid in increased productivity and prevents employees refraining from work due to health issues then in large scale sectors many training programs can be conducted to improve the talent hidden in the employees now how will we increase our sex ratio now we've already seen what does sex ratio mean it means the number of females per thousand men 
okay generally in a country like india the sex ratio is very poor so what can we do to improve the sex ratio educating and creating awareness among the masses that is among the people about the role of women in the development of a country may improve the sex ratio making sure that laws against female feticide and infanticide are followed properly preventing child marriages to avoid the mortality of young girls granting equal rights to women and making them enjoy equal opportunities on par with men or in par with men increasing the self esteem of women through education employment and independence now let's see how we can curb the population growth increasing population is always a concern and poses a serious threat to the economic development of the country now what are the steps to improve or to reduce the growth of population making people especially the rural masses understand about the problems faced due to increased population adopting various birth control methods providing education and eradication of poverty which indirectly helps in population control an educated person can understand the consequences of having too many children similarly if poverty is eradicated there will be an end to child labor child labor persuades a poor man to have children and send them to jobs to earn for himself and his family let's go through and understand the information that they have given us on page number 44 now they have given us census of india conducts enumeration of population every 10 years enumeration means counting in simple terms it means counting of population every 10 years now if you see the first census in india was carried out in the year 1872 however the first complete census was taken in the year 1881 and since then every 10 years they have been taking they have been taking the or they have been counting the population now similarly in brazil ibge that is brazilian institute of geography and statistics carries out census every 10 years the first census survey of both the countries was carried out in 1872 as i already mentioned before in india the census is conducted at the start of the decade that is 1961 1971 1981 1991 so on and so forth in brazil census is conducted at the end of the decade that is 1960 1970 1980 so on and so forth we have come to an end of our today's session hope you have understood stay home stay safe thank you